So today is the last day we're talking about this renewed life. In one of the sermon series that I think has been a favorite of all of our pastors, I think I've heard um, all of them except for Pastor Ty complain about preaching on Revelation at least five times. <laughs> but it's been really a, a blast to go through Revelation with you all. And I hope that one of the things you've learned by going through the book of Revelation is that we really have no business reading the book of Revelation unless we have a deep, intimate knowledge of the rest of Scripture. We, we put that book at the end for a reason. But as we unpack this book... Today, again, we see, and all through this series, we have seen such beautiful images of what this renewed life looks like to, to fill our imagination and to inspire us for what is ahead for us. So let's hear this word again. This is from Revelation chapter 22. We're at the end of the book now. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, Bright as, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street also, on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. That's the word that we're going to meditate on today. And as we continue to talk about the renewed life, right, this renewed life really holds in it all together, all of the things we've talked about in this series. We talked about renewed love and how, how God inspires us to go into the world of love. We talked about the renewed song that we hear when Jesus ascends into heaven. We talked about the renewed celebration and, and how heaven is going to be a party. We talked about the renewed kingdom, the renewed Jerusalem. And today we center on the renewed life. We've seen Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21. And today we like zoom in on the center of it, the garden, the place where life happens. And so what I want to do this morning is try to answer the question, what is the renewed life? So that we can see what it is for sure, but also what it isn't quite. And ultimately, when, by seeing what is this renewed life, I hope that we'll be able to see that even though it seems like it's distant because it is so far in contrast to our everyday life experience, that this renewed life actually changes our everyday lives. So first, what is this renewed life? I think one answer that we'll go to often is that it's a kind of spiritual life. We've talked about this before, that a lot of the book of Revelation is symbolic, and so that might take that seriously to say, well, this is maybe a symbolic understanding of what's going on in the new heavens and the new earth. This is the spiritual life we have here and now. To say it's a spiritual life would take seriously when Jesus says, Everyone who believes in me will live even though he dies. Because the only way that that can happen, and we've seen it happen time and time again, that, that loved ones who, who die in Christ, well, their, their lives must continue in a spiritual way. And that spiritual life is definitely a piece of it. But I think when we focus on the spiritual life that we get in this renewed life, we're in danger of mixing that with a kind of a kind of vague, general American faith. And what this vague, general American faith says is, is, is things that are true, but, but really vague, like, like, like God is love, like God forgives, like, like God is, is doing things for us. And, and it kind of helps us to imagine God as a kind of genie in a bottle who's, who's going to serve our needs. I think this is on display, this kind of vague spiritual faith is on display in the most apparent and most painful ways at funerals. Have you ever been to one of those where, where you're not really sure where the person's faith was? And what happens at those funerals? People stand up and they talk about how beautiful this person's soul was and how they're, they're looking down on us now as if 
the, the hope in spiritual life is that, that one day we're, we're here on earth, we're, we're playing in the game, we're giving it our all, but one day you'll get to be subbed out and you'll stand on the sidelines and, and, and you'll care about the game and you'll be looking in on the game, but you really won't have any influence. And if that's our hope, well, that's really sad. If that's our hope, if our hope is completely just this, this spiritual life that, that we're hoping for, what well, kind of almost seems so distant that it's fake. That this, this isn't the point of what we believe, and it's certainly not the point in who we believe in. If our faith was only supposed to be spiritual, why did God become a man? See, I don't believe in just a general, vague, spiritual faith. I believe in a specific faith. I believe in a God who loved me enough to become a human being, who walked on this earth in a very real way, who died a very real death, and who rose from the dead with a very, very real life. And if we're going to understand the peace of spiritual life that is renewed life, for sure, when our loved ones die in Christ, they have life with Jesus, but they're not worried about what's going on here in the game. They're not looking on to see us. They are worshiping our God because they are in a more blessed state than we are. You see, this life, this renewed life is not just a spiritual life. It is a very real life. And if we're going to talk about how revelation is symbolic. It's, it's symbolic in like the way that birthday cake is symbolic, right? You see the birthday cake and you know a celebration is gonna happen. But when I see a birthday, pay, birthday cake, I see straight sugar that I am going to consume and let my blood sugar skyrocket, but I love that experience, right? That's what revelation is like. It is a real reality that has symbolic implications for us. You see, what we see in this passage is more than spiritual. It's more than fake. It is real. And it might be better to talk about when we ask what is the renewed life, it might be better to talk about it as a future life. Because we know that this is going to happen. Here we have a God who is real. He has really risen from the dead. He is really reigning. Our God, Jesus, is really reigning at the right hand of the Father in control of all things. And he is really coming back to bring what we really just read in Revelation chapter 22. Maybe it's better to talk about the renewed life as our future life because this is where we end up. And I want to do that just for a minute. So if you want to take out your Bible app and scroll through with me, we're going to unpack Revelation chapter 22 and just imagine these images for a minute. So in this picture, we have the throne of God and of the Lamb, Jesus and God really reigning on the throne. There's this river that's coming out from the throne. And you can try to picture it as bright as crystal. It's like this river is so clear and pure. It's like kind of like the springs where you can see all the way to the bottom, but God and the Lamb are shining as the light of the city on the throne that's right over this river and reflecting off of it so much that, that you can hardly look at it because it's so bright. And this river is the river of life because God and the Lamb, they are the source of life. That's the way that it's supposed to be all the way back in the beginning. They speak and life happens. They breathe and life comes into Adam and Eve at the beginning of creation. God is always the source of life. And if he was to hold his hand back from our creation, life would stop. But here in this new heavens and new earth, God is the source of life in a visible, tangible way. And then there's this tree. This tree that is on both sides of the river. And if you read a passage similar to this in Ezekiel chapter 47, it talks about it as multiple trees. But John, it almost seems like he's picturing like a tree with multiple root systems that's coming up and this kind of weird super tree that has 12 kinds of fruit. But this tree is the tree of life. 
right? And this renewed life, it has, it has this fruit that sustains us and these leaves that heal us. And that matters. Because some of us woke up this morning with some extra aches and pains. Some of us woke up this morning, I'm not at the aches and pains stage, but at the stage where I feel like I need to stretch before I get out of bed because I might hurt myself when I put my feet down. Some of you might have woken up this morning with a little tickle in the back of your throat and you haven't told anybody yet because you're afraid you're getting sick, but you don't want everybody to like avoid you like the plague. Some of us might be worshiping online today because we were too sick to come here. Some of us might have illnesses that stick with us. Some of our family members might have been fighting a disease for a long time. We experience in this life pain and suffering and illness and our bodies aren't the way that they were supposed to be. But in that life, in the renewed life, none of that None of that remains. Because this fruit from this tree sustains us. This fruit from this tree takes away the pains of aging. It takes away the pains of sickness. It takes away every influence that illness has in our lives. It takes away all disease so that we will live in this glorified state of existing forever where our bodies, they don't rebel against us anymore. They don't break down anymore. They get to last forever with God. And that renewed life, that future life is awesome. And then even, even the leaves of this tree matter. The healing of the nations is in them. I don't know about you, but I really long for the healing of the nations. If you've ever watched the news, I think you also long for the healing of the nations. This past week, we heard how just a couple dozen pagers or communication devices, whatever they were, really tore apart families and societies. Over in Lebanon, a couple of these communication devices were, were laced with explosives. Dozens of people died. Hundreds were injured. But I think even more than that, we, we have to consider how, how thousands of families were deeply impacted. Thousands of people who witnessed these events can't go to the grocery store and feel safe anymore. More than that, millions of the Lebanese realize that, that war isn't just about the people who are signing up to fight. It's about civilians now, too. Their lives are in danger. And I think that shows us in just a little picture how war has so much of a bigger influence on us than we realize. For us who haven't fought in wars, who haven't been veterans, sometimes it feels far away. But, but when, war, when war hits a society, the blows kind of fracture into the lives of individuals. And as I reflect on war, it actually impacts my family too in deep ways. The healing of the nations is in those leaves, and wars are no more. And if war still feels far away, we, don't, we have something that's not so far away, which is election season. And I was talking to somebody this week, and they said, I really hope Jesus comes back before the election happens. And I said, <laughs> amen. <laughs> That's really not a comment on uh, two political parties. It's really not a comment on candidates. I think it's just a comment on the divisiveness of our country at this stage. And, and this isn't about just being nice to each other and can't we all just get along? Because if you look at those divisions at all, those divisions matter. They're there for a reason. We, we can't just pretend to get along when we have the divisions that we do in our country. But one day there's going to be healing for those. Because the healing of the nations is in those leaves. This is the future life. This is the renewed life that we have. And then go on to verse 3, and it just keeps getting better. This is the beautiful thing about Revelation 22. And we had to stop at verse 3, but if you go home, it keeps going, and it's better and better every verse. Verse 3, there's nothing accursed there. 
The curse falls away completely. Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve, they fall into sin. And what happens is the consequences of sin come flooding into our world in so many different ways. And the ways that God names them is that the woman will have pain in childbearing, which is what God tells them to do, be fruitful and multiply. And then the man who was created to work the ground will have pain in his labor. So, so literally the things we were made to do now are painful. And then the big one, death, comes into the world. But in the end, there will be nothing accursed. There will be no reason to, to be fruitful and multiply because this new Jerusalem will be full of God's people. There will be no more reason for us to by the sweat of our brow work because work will be a delight and we will forever be worshiping God and the Lamb. This is the future life. This is the renewed life. Man, that's awesome. Hope in that promise. Because that promise is everything we've ever hoped for. And this is the most beautiful thing. That as the pain of separation, as the pain of death, as the pain of the curse, as the pain of suffering, and the pain of division fade away, God and the Lamb will be there. And what takes the place of pain and suffering is relationship with the God who created us. Perfect relationship with one another. Perfect relationship with the world God made. This is the renewed life. But even this, right, if the renewed life is a future life, even this still feels a little bit far away sometimes. It feels a little bit distant, and as much as we want that life to come, sometimes it feels like it's almost too hard to grasp because it's such a contrast to the way we experience life in this world. But see, what God does for us is he gives us not just a spiritual life, not just a future life. He fills us up with real life. This is what the renewed life is. It's about the fact that that river of life that comes out from the throne, that's not the only way we have access to life. But God actually came down from his throne in the person of Jesus. And what does he do? He gets in the river. Not a river as bright as crystal. If you've ever seen the Jordan River, it's about as far from that as it can be. It looks like, it looks like mud flowing. <laughs> it is a very brown, dirty river. But Jesus went into that river. He went into that river because he was going to be baptized. What he tells John is this is to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus brings us real life by meeting us in the waters of baptism. And as he is baptized, he takes all of our sin. He takes the curse and the influence of it. And what does he give us? He gives us righteousness. I don't know how many of you are Taylor Swift fans. Uh, I wouldn't really count myself as a Taylor Swift fan, but I feel like uh, Taylor Swift is this American musician who over the course of a little over a decade has crossed genres. I think that her body of work is kind of impressive. But what she did a couple of years ago, I think was really impressive. There was this thing called the Eras Tour. And the people who follow Taylor Swift count themselves as Swifties. If you were a Swiftie, you probably did whatever you could to be in attendance at one of the Eras Tours around the country. And this was amazing to me because people would spend hundreds of dollars on these tickets and they sold out in like days. It was amazing how quickly that, that, that had taken over the country. But if you ever knew anybody, so think back to a year or two ago, if you knew anybody who had a ticket to this era tour, everything in that week leading up was going towards getting to that experience. Right? The experience, they hadn't had the experience, they didn't know what the experience of the era tour was going to be like yet, but they had the ticket. And so they were going to move everything. It doesn't matter if you've got a birthday. Your birthday's on the wrong day this year. You've got to figure it out because I am getting to that era tour. I think that's a little bit like what the renewed life God gives us is. 
When we look to the future life, we see this incredible experience that we can't even really wrap our minds around. And we don't have the experience yet. But when Jesus meets us in the waters of baptism, he meets us in the waters of baptism to take our sin and to give us the ticket. The ticket to real life. We own that real life now. We own it now, and we, we, as we look at our lives, should be shaping the experience of our lives so that we can figure out how to make it to that experience. Everything that we do should serve that experience because this renewed life is already ours, and it's not, it's not fake, and it's not only in the future. It's ours right now. God has given us a renewed life. And the world speaks its promises. And the world's going to promise a lot of things. They're going to promise us power. They're going to promise if you, if you do this, if you work really hard, you'll advance in your career, you'll, you'll make the steps you need to make to, to become somebody great and respectable. Open up any app. Open up your television. You'll see the marketing campaigns that say, buy this product, and this will get you closer to happiness. This will, will fulfill your desires, right? All of these promises are filling our lives. Or, or they'll say, well, buy into this thing. Buy into this mindset, and, and you'll be safe, and you'll have everything that you need. Right? The world fills us with these fake promises. But when we have the ticket, we know that this renewed life belongs to us. This renewed life is the only thing that satisfies. I have a good friend who is probably the coolest person I know. And I think the cool thing about him, what makes him so cool, is he has never once in his life cared about how cool he is. Right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think of him. People can say, you're so cool. It just all kind of, it all rolls off of him. Right? But the fact that he doesn't care makes him more cool. And I think in some ways, that's what we as Christians are called to do. We know that we belong to this renewed life. And so when we don't care about the promises this world has... Well, we can actually invest in the things that matter there in that experience. I don't, I don't care about the power you're going to give me. I don't care about how you're going to fulfill my desires here and now. I, if I don't care about the, the security that I have because I know I'm holding on to this renewed life, I can invest, invest without abandon in the relationship that I have with God and worshiping Him like I will on that day. I can invest without abandon in the relationships I have with other people because, because I know that those relationships have, have the potential to matter for eternity. I can invest in the relationship I have with God's creation. Look, I don't care about the promises of this world because what I'm holding on to is a ticket to renewed life. That life is real. That life is here. That life is now so that we can live our lives full of a kind of contagious hope that everybody will want to be a part of because they see that we aren't stopped by the promises of this world, but we are driven by the promises of a God who will certainly deliver. This is real life. This is the life God has promised us. This is the renewed life in the new creation. And he gives it to us through Jesus. He gives it to us freely. So hold on to your ticket and let the promises of this world fade away. Let's go to our God in prayer. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus into this world to show us that his love is not just spiritual, it's real. His life is real. This life that you've promised us isn't just way off in the future, but we hold on to the ticket here and now. God, teach us to lead our entire lives for that experience of the renewed life that you're bringing to us for certain. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a weekly awakening question for us to reflect on this morning. And that question is, what healing 
are you looking forward to from the tree of life? Take some time this week to talk about that with a loved one, with a family member, with, with somebody that's close to you. What healing are you looking forward to experience from the tree of life?